this was a moment where we were all looking forward to a very strong, uh, passionate speech about what the U.S. can do yeah. um, to lead the way yeah. in, in many fronts. I, don't, I mean, I don't think he said anything necessarily different to what Hillary Clinton's already told us. So I there was nothing new. We were expecting something yeah. new, and yeah. that wasn't there. When you were saying earlier this this has been unusual because it's so quiet inside the conference. But as a former environment minister, you've obviously been to several of these events before. What what will they be going through at the moment? What what will it be like inside the the conference centre? Will um, I, I suspect that what's happening is that the different groupings are positioning themselves even harder than they were yesterday. And, and that would be a pity, but that appears to be the, what's happening in there. Um, and this is a moment where you have uh, policy decision makers, heads of state, and what we need is a policy agreement, an, an agreement that comes from those who can lead the way taking into consideration the, the two years of negotiations and the, and the main uh, um, content of, of the negotiations, but you do need in a step that is the next one from the technicalities of, of the agreements. And um, I don't see that happening. I, I, I have a feeling that people are just lost in, in a discussion that probably doesn't lead into anything uh, important. Staying up all night is difficult, it's tiring. What's it like sort of physically for? for well, it's terrible, but, but I want to comment on something else that is terribly <laughs> important uh, and that in a way is reflected in the silence in there. The NGOs are not there, yeah. not in sufficient numbers. No. And, and that's really a pity because um, uh, it's not only that they are not there um, because the space is, is, is not big enough or whatever, the, the expectations were created by giving accreditations uh, to yeah. so many NGOs and suddenly to be told that you are not allowed in, that only very small numbers are allowed in, is it, it sort of breaks the rules of the game and in the noise, the spirit, the passion, the emotions of the NGOs is absent. And uh, they have been drivers of this process of negotiations for two years. So it's yeah. important to recognize that there is a tremendous vacuum by, by the absence of, of um, the NGO voices. How has that been for WWF? Because they've set up an alternative forum, but it's obviously not the same sort of yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, it, it is very frustrating to, to have uh, the, our numbers decreased so much that uh, essentially we're not there. Yeah, essentially we don't have a presence there. And, and I think that that has not kept us from influencing the negotiations. And so they uh, have not been effective in terms of being able to lock us out. Because we, we, we're, we're texting, we're Skyping, we, we, we are able to, to get inside to the negotiators and influence them. But, but it really makes it so it's not in their faces that this is a transparent process and they're going to be held accountable. And I think transparency is really one of the, has been the theme of, the, of, of these two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, from the NGO perspective, there simply hasn't been enough transparency. We've been in every meeting with these people every month almost for the past two years and all of a sudden we were locked out. There's a real lack of transparency there. In terms of what the U.S. is asking of China, it also comes down to a transparency issue. How much transparency can there be around the negotiations? I think that some of the biggest frustrations of developing countries have been around transparency, have been because there seemed to be texts coming from nowhere, coming from the sky, that they had no real uh, influence, influence over. They don't know where it came from. Yeah. They, they feel no buy-in because it hasn't been a participatory process. And, and they, don't, they don't feel... Uh, uh, validated that their perspective is important and heard and relevant and so so they feel like the process has been very intransparent e and even now right now we have heads of state as we're speaking sitting in a room but there's only a few of them there's there's only about 50 of them and so so there are countries that feel very disenfranchised the NGOs feel very disenfranchised and then you have the US feeling uh, and and th there are particular members pr in the US Senate I would say that particularly feel that they don't have enough transparency into what China's doing and so you can see that this 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 issue of transparency has really been the theme of this conference um, yeah. and unfortunately it's been a lack of transparency not the existence of transparency that's been driving everything we've seen. Yeah. 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 There's a, um, 
article here just from earlier from the Washington Post saying that the deadline of a legally binding agreement by 2010 is non-existent. <laughs> so, I mean, what happens now? If they don't get a legally binding agreement tonight or Sunday and we don't set a deadline in 2010, what's going to happen from now on, do you think? Well, it's not over is the first thing I would say. No. We have <laughs> lots of versions of text being leaked to us. Every five minutes there's a new text in my inbox. <laughs> Some of them have a legally binding agreement in, in, in just a few months. Some of them don't. Um, and so now is the moment uh, for everybody to raise their voice in whatever way that they can, whether it's going onto yeah. a website yeah. and signing mm -hmm. a petition or, you know, w in, in whatever they can, t the, whatever way they can to make it clear that, that they've got to fix this in the next 24 hours. It's on, you know, it's on a knife's edge right now and it could go in any direction. Um, I think if it does go in the direction of not having a legally binding agreement, then we can say honestly we have not done anything to prevent catastrophe. And maybe, maybe Yolanda, you can speak a little bit more to what, how the official process might reconvene after that. Well, as you said, nobody knows what's happening, but I have the feeling that what we will have tomorrow or Sunday is an agreement to take four, five, six months to come yeah. up with something. Um, a, a, an agreement, a political agreement with a mandate to the negotiators to continue and to really come with something. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's something that, that, that can be ratified by, by the political leaders. I don't think that um, in 24 hours we will have anything legally binding. No, but don't you think if we postpone it for about however many months, are we going to then end up doing business in the last two weeks again? Or do you think, you know, will it happen at progressively over that time period? Well, I think what has to happen in the next few months is that the U.S. Senate needs to pass climate legislation. Um, and if that happens, then I feel pretty confident that we will get a legally binding agreement in 2010, um, Washington Post article notwithstanding. You know, I, I think yeah. that we will get a legally binding agreement in 2010 as long as the U.S. Senate can do its job um, and make sure that the U.S. has, yeah. has uh, yeah, yeah. The, the U.S. negotiators have the confidence to negotiate. Right now they're really lacking that negotiating mandate yeah. that they need. Yeah. And so, so I absolutely think we can get to a legally binding agreement in the next few months. And I think that as soon as the U.S. Senate passes legislation, it's going to give incredible momentum to these talks um, because the U.S. negotiators will behave differently. Um, there will just be a different uh, demeanor. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it matters how the U.S. carries themselves. Um, we saw that today. It, it does matter the tone that the U.S. takes. Um, it's, it, it's influential in terms of, it, of, of the tone of the overall meetings. Yeah, very much, very much. And, I, and I'm sure that the moment that, that the U.S. takes the lead, there will be many, many of the obstacles that we see today in terms of suspicion and, and what's really being cooked in there will disappear. Um, but that needs time. It won't yeah. happen in a week or two weeks. It will probably be four to six months no. or something like that. But isn't this, and this is a strange way to do business, to leave it to these last two weeks? And, you know, Crazy. Why, why Crazy. Is it done like this? Crazy because it has to do also with costs, not yeah. only financial costs for each one of us uh, as individuals, as organizations, NGOs and governments also. It's a tremendous... Um, investment of energy, of uh, funds, uh, and, and, and uh, add to that the frustration. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, that remains. It takes time for people to recover, to catch up with, with the energy that you need to continue these negotiations, yeah. to get rid of the frustrations and, and recover the trust that should be the centerpiece for any, any negotiation. Yeah. And what I find is that in the, these last couple of weeks, we have lost trust in each other. Um, yeah. And that's terribly damaging for any negotiating process. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us. That's all we've got time for, unfortunately. Thank you very much to our guests, Yolanda Kakabazi and Kia Chatterjee. That is our last live show. Unfortunately, we're not going to be back for another one, but we will be here bringing you content until the end of the talk, so we will keep you up to date, even if it takes all weekend. Thank you very much for joining us over the last two weeks. Goodbye. <laughs>